Bitcoin NFT and Bitcoin Ordinals. Is this just another copy of ERC20 NFTs? Nope, that notion could not be any further from the truth. So what are the differences? Well, in this video, I'll be explaining to you the important and valuable key differences on what separates a Bitcoin NFT from an Ethereum NFT. Francis Dune, uncensored. The crypto industry is making a full circle right now and all the roads lead back to where it once began. And that's Bitcoin, baby. You see, the only reason why we have these alternative blockchains like Ethereum is because Bitcoin had some imperfections. And one of its biggest imperfections were, it just sits there and does nothing with slow TPS. But the latest upgrade to the network, that being Taproot, has truly changed all of this. You see, Taproot is regarded as one of the more significant upgrades to the network because it actually combines transactions and signatures together. This is truly incredible because it makes for much faster validations across the entire network, hence a much faster transaction per second, which was one of Bitcoin's biggest hurdles in order to scale. Now, Taproot also has a scramble feature which compiles and mixes up a bunch of transactions, making these transactions much harder to track. So the privacy aspect has also scaled immensely as well. So now that you have a brief understanding or summary of what Taproot is, let's now discuss the key differences when comparing a Bitcoin NFT to an Ethereum NFT. Well, the first major difference is... Bitcoin NFTs, well, they're not NFTs. They're actually Satoshis wrapped up or inscribed in specific content, like images, PDF files, audio clips, and even short videos. This is ginormous because when comparing it to Ethereum, you don't really need a smart contract or the need to actually generate a new token because the Bitcoin network in essence acts as the third party or the smart contract in this case. And we all know Bitcoin is the world's most secure and decentralized network. You can't have a safer counterparty, if you will, or smart contract, if you will, than the actual Bitcoin network in itself. Now, from a security standpoint, you don't need to worry about a smart contract hack or exploits and or bugs making it much more valuable due to the higher standards of security it actually provides. So the individual Satoshi literally is the underlying asset rather than some dude generating a brand new freaking token. Now, the NFT of Satoshi also has its own serial number, making it very easy to identify what ordinal is what. This was made possible once again with the recent Taproot upgrade. Now, you could actually think of this as if Satoshi Nakamoto himself issued these ordinals, and in essence, he did, because he did issue the Satoshis, and not some random guy on Twitter or, say, on YouTube. And from a creator standpoint, this is freaking awesome because now it cuts a lot of cost and overhead. What do I mean? Well, now you don't have to hire a, um, a smart contract dev and you don't have to hire an NFT dev to create your new tokens. So that's very desirable and very attractive from a creator standpoint as well. Speaking of cutting costs, since we have established that Bitcoin NFTs are literally Satoshis, this now means the ordinal, well, to simplify things, is part of the actual transaction being sent, which in turn will have a direct cut in price when it comes to the actual minting fees. As I explained in my last video titled How to Create a Bitcoin NFT, the average price to mint a Bitcoin NFT averages anywhere from $17 only up to $25. Now, when comparing this to Ethereum, the average mint today will set you back about $120. Now, that's a massive discount in minting fees when you compare the two networks. Another key difference is, since Bitcoin NFTs are inscribed on SATs, they are legit 100% stored on chain which are then validated in blocks with other Bitcoin transactions, which are then stored on the blockchain. Now, when we actually compare this to Ethereum, which uses metadata to make changes to their NFTs, for example, it's quite normal in the NFT world for community members to update their metadata to make changes to their assets. Now, for a Bitcoin NFT community member, they can never experience this because once a Satoshi is inscribed, there's no turning back and images will remain forever in the form of how they were created initially. Last but certainly not least, from a creator standpoint, Bitcoin NFTs do not support or allow royalty fees due to the lack of incorporating smart contract functionality to code and automatically taking out a 5% out of the sales, which we all know Ethereum's NFTs on OpenSea can facilitate such things. I personally think this is a great thing because, um, you know, this should take away some of the greed for self-proclaimed NFT artists who probably never own a piece of art before they heard the letters or word nft depending how you look at that you know these guys are incentivized and motivated mainly off of the royalties rather than actually creating a unique and desirable asset which is community driven 
Well, there you go. Those are my key differences on what separates Bitcoin NFTs to Ethereum NFTs. If you did like the video, do let me know in the comment section and also smash the like button. And thank you for making this far into the video. So you know what? There ain't really much stuff to say other than until the next video, you're on your own. Later. Francis Dune Uncensored